and welcome! My name is Laura and I am a polyglot who is studying five languages and this is my channel, Languages with Laura. And today's video is going to be a little more chaotic than I initially hoped it was going to be. I am obviously a polyglot. I study a lot of languages. That is something I have always loved to do and I'm at different levels with different languages. For Spanish, for example, I've been studying it since first grade. So I've studied Spanish almost my entire life. I'm not a native speaker by any means and I still have a lot to learn, especially when it comes to like cultural nuances and idioms and things like that. Now, this video was initially supposed to be a fun kind of couple week long vlog study with me for my Spanish proficiency exam because I am going back to school this fall to finish my degree in translation and I was going to be a Spanish English translation student and I knew I needed to take a uh, placement test, kind of like a proficiency exam, placed me in a higher Spanish class than just starting from zero. I recently met with my advisor to talk about scheduling everything like that and so on Monday we have our meeting and she says, I'm gonna send you an email with a link to the placement test. Once you receive that email you have one week, one week to take the exam or the link will expire. And she said she was going to send it to me tomorrow, the next day, which would have been Tuesday. And I was like, okay, a week, that's not near as much time as I thought I would have, but that won't be a problem. And then I get home from work and I realize she actually sent it to me on that Monday. Now, I currently work a full-time job and it tends to leave me very tired. It's a very physically taxing job. And so I don't want to take this exam on a day that I have to work. Uh, but because she sent it to me on Monday and it's due the following Monday, Saturday and Sunday are my only options for taking the exam. And I'd rather have it done sooner rather than later when it comes to the weekend so that I can actually relax and not stress. Today is Thursday. <laughs> so this is going to be more of a sprint of how I am going to prepare for my placement test to go back to school. I am hoping to be placed in an advanced level course, which for the school would be about a 300 level course, I believe is what I want to get into, so that I can immediately start taking Spanish translation courses and not have to take any Spanish classes before I can take translation courses. The other catch is that I don't know very much about this exam. My advisor doesn't know much about it either and has told me that if I score high enough then I would have a face-to-face -face meeting or a virtual face-to-face -face meeting with someone to discuss higher level placement and so that is my goal. I want to score well enough on this exam to need to have a conversation with someone. Whether that's in English or Spanish, I don't care. I just want to do well enough to have that opportunity. However, I'm a terrible test taker. I have always been so much better at using my Spanish with people. Native speakers are not, just with people. And tests I just get so in my head about and then I doubt everything and then I answer what I know is wrong. And it's a bummer. But, so I don't think there will be any speaking. There will definitely be listening and reading, but I don't know if there will be writing, but I'm going to assume there is because any good placement test should have a writing section. Most placement tests, as well as proficiency exams, will have all four reading, writing, speaking, and listening. So that is always something to keep in mind when studying for an exam like this. Now, I will also say, I was previously a translation student at a different school and I ended up going on a two-year sabbatical because they actually dropped the translation program. While I was studying at the school though, I did already take a Spanish proficiency exam 
and I passed it. I passed it quite well. I, it just wouldn't transfer from one school to the next, which is why I have to do this placement exam. That's where I'm at. And that proficiency exam was two years ago. Let's start studying now. What I've done so far is focusing on my reading and my listening because those tend to be my weaker performances. I can have all the confidence in the world in my speaking because I know I'm going to make mistakes, but I'm still going to be understood, which is what allows me to just keep talking. And the same with writing. I will probably make some mistakes in writing, but I'm just trying to tell a story. I'm trying to get my point across and that's fine. So I have been watching like movies, like Disney movies. I just finished watching Encanto. It makes me cry every single time. And I am watching a TV show called Always a Witch. I like watching Nailed It Mexico in order to kind of get various practices with listening to Spanish and as well as they're all things that I am interested in that I love. They keep my attention quite well. I also listen to quite a bit of Latin pop and um, Spanish music and so that's always helpful but recently I'm definitely more tuning into the lyrics more than I have in the past. And then I am also reading a book and I do plan on doing another video about reading a book in your target language but it's what's helping me with my reading comprehension so reading a book reading articles if i can find news i also should listen to more podcasts and watching youtube videos to help get practice there the other thing that i plan on doing is uh using my handy dandy Spanish language journal. My last video was starting a new language journal for a brand new language that I just started learning, German. And I had planned to do this with an intermediate level language, which would have been Arabic for me for an example. And then the third video I was going to do was starting a language journal for a language you are quite proficient in or advanced in and so I was going to do that for Spanish. However, now because I'm on a much tighter time limit, I'm just going to skip ahead and make my Spanish journal video. Those are kind of the main tools that I am using as of right now to study so that I can get the reading, writing, listening, and speaking. I have no problem talking to myself in Spanish <laughs> and I will be writing as much as I can and I will be trying to predict what types of questions will be on this exam based off of my proficiency exam that I took years ago. Like what were the things they asked me? What are some kind of just basic questions that you know people ask to get to know each other or stories that I can tell a lot of times there's always like a describe this or describe a trip that you have done or would like to do or pretend you have done so I can practice writing stories and things like that now because I know that I'm aiming towards a specific level I want to also brush up on the necessary elements of language that I would need to display in order to reach that level. For example, I know that in order to reach a higher level, I'm going to need to display skills past conjug conjugation of present and past. So I will also try and figure out ways to incorporate future and conditional and subjunctive to show them that I have learned these things and that I can use them because if I display that yes I know how to use the conditional then they don't have to put me in a class that teaches the conditional and this goes the same with vocabulary trying to uh, focus on more detailed vocabulary but also for me personally I also want to brush up on like prepositional phrases and transitions because it's one thing to write a bunch of sentences and another to write a flowing paragraph with in addition to also moving on phrases like those 
it just makes your writing seem much more natural and like you are you know what you're talking about and you're confident in your language skills and so those are definitely phrases and words that i will want to brush up on in order to use in the writing section and speaking if i end up having to do one those are what i'm focusing on those are some of the strategies that i'm going to be using to help me study so now the actual hard part actually studying and it doesn't have to be hard. It's only hard because I have a limited amount of time. I thought I was going to take this in the summer because I thought I would have to do it in person. That's my mistake. <laughs> That's on me. So let's start studying. And you can feel free to study along with me. Doesn't have to be Spanish. Doesn't have to be for an exam. You can just use this time to be any kind of productive that you want. I just encourage it to be language learning because that is... The goal of this channel is to all learn languages together. So. that it was going to be the end of the vlog now that I passed my Spanish exam. Well, no. <laughs> so what actually happens next is now that I've passed the reading and the grammar at a C1 level, I am going to be writing an essay in Spanish. And how that works for the test that I'm taking is that they sent me an email with a document and I have one hour to answer whatever is on the document. So I will be doing that this coming weekend, hopefully when I have some more time because there's still one more final step after that. After we do the essay, I will have a 20 minute interview with the head of the world language department where we will speak together and he can test my, my listening and my speaking. I've only got the first part of this done. So I'm going to continue to focus on Spanish this next week and probably the week after, depending on when we can schedule the speaking. It will unfortunately be over Zoom because I'm not currently in the state that the professor is in, so it will have to be a Zoom meeting. I'm just gonna go ahead and sit out here and do some more studying. I have my language journal with me for Spanish. I also have my notebook because it is writing an essay. It's technically typing. I am going to practice writing out some potential essay-esque questions. And then once I've done those, I'm going to practice typing them so that my typing speed in Spanish can be up to date. I'm a little nervous about the accent situation because I don't have easy access to accents on my computer at the moment so i'm really hoping that they're going to be provided so i don't have to go and search for each accent but if i do have to do that i'll just search for each accent that i might use and then put them at the top of the document and then copy and paste where i need them 
So that is my strategy for if you don't have easy access to accents, maybe you don't have the keyboard downloaded, or if you're like me and you don't actually have the cover, a keyboard cover that shows you when you're using a language with accents on your computer, which key is what. <laughs> so in English, we use the QWERTY computer, but in other languages, for example, French, we use Azerty. And so the, the letters change a little bit to accommodate and I just don't have a cover. So I have those, I have a drink, I have a snack, and let's get to studying. I give myself a prompt to follow that could be a possible thing on the essay writing a lot of times they have like what was your favorite memory or uh, what would be a dream vacation or have you traveled anywhere um, which is a great topic for me to talk about because I have done a lot of traveling so that can cover this answer can cover a wide range of topics or questions and it's a very easy way to show off my skills with using the past tense, both preterite and imperfect, but I also try and think of other tenses and moods that I can use to display that I've learned them. So that is one thing to always keep in mind is like, you could always write a simple answer, but if you can make it more complex, you have varying lengths of sentences, various sentence structures, try and incorporate like for Spanish, the subjunctive or the conditional or the future just to show that you have learned them so you don't need to repeat courses that focus on them. And then what I did is if there was something I was unsure about, a grammar, a spelling, an accent, a word, I would underline it right then and there so that I can check my work when I'm done with my little timer and exercise so I can look at my notes, look at my notebook here and kind of compare yes that was the right word or no or whatever it was and I can make the correction. So I'm gonna do this a couple of different times with various prompts and just things like that. I also might end the day and start picking up the habit of journaling in Spanish a little bit more and again trying to incorporate more than just the past tense or the present tense even in my journaling to get used to flowing through them and constantly using them. Yeah, that is how I practice for a written exam. So I have now taken the essay portion of my placement exam and it went okay, I will say. Basically how it went is I was emailed a document and they asked me to complete it in an hour and like I would have to close the document before an hour was up, otherwise the essay would be not counted. It was just one question, so it really was an essay. They wanted an intro and a conclusion and they had like a little paragraph of what themes they wanted me to include and some ideas for me to write about. They also had a request of two to three pages for this essay and they were of course looking at grammar and word choice and they were also looking at what what grammar aspects I used so I made sure to use future, conditional, subjunctive, past, present, all of the ones that I have studied so far so that I can be accurately placed where I can continue my education rather than repeating something I've already learned just because I didn't display that I 
can use it and have already learned it. I'm a little shaky on it just because writing is probably my weakest of the four. I haven't done too much of it recently. Recently I've been doing a lot of listening and speaking, but overall I think, I think it's okay. We'll just have to see. And so now the final step is the, the verbal interview. I will be doing a Zoom session with the head of the World Languages Department and we will speak in Spanish for like 20 minutes to half an hour. So for this, what I'm going to do to prepare is to speak. I get the feeling that they're going to ask a lot more about me and my history with the language and my passion for the language because those are themes that were in the written essay and so that's the kind of thing I'm going to practice. I'm going to sit down and I'm going to talk to my tortoise. I'm going to sit down, I'm going to talk to myself in the mirror, I'm going to just kind of quiz myself randomly whenever. I am going to continue to watch TV shows to hear how it's being spoken and to see what else I can apply to my own speaking. But really all I can do at this point is just talk. And I can even talk about summaries of the shows that I'm watching, of the books that I'm reading, just anything and everything I can do. Just sit there and talk. A great thing that I am going to be doing also is recording myself. So setting out my phone, doing a voice recorder so I can listen back and circle what places I stuttered, what pronunciation I may have botched, what grammar I could have included or maybe have done wrong, like what comes out of my mouth that needs to be fixed or improved. And then I can practice that over and over again until it feels natural and more comfortable for me to do what is correct. So it is extremely valuable. I know a lot of people hate the sound of their own voice. They hate listening to themselves talk through a recording or a video, but if you can just kind of get over that and just focus on the grammar that you're using or the pronunciation that you are, you know, with what you are speaking, it can be a very valuable tool. If I had any native speakers around me, I would definitely be continuing conversations with them, but there are also Plenty of amazing resources I can use, such as finding like a tandem partner and various things I can do there. I am actually going to end this video here. I will let you know how it all goes. I will do a video of preparing to go back to school and everything like that. Yeah, I hope you really enjoyed this kind of vlog, study with me, prepare for this placement exam. I have, I definitely needed all the review and it's been very helpful. So if you have any tips on how you review languages, feel free to comment them down below. Or if you've taken placement exams, what are some tips that you have or experiences that you have had that can possibly help other people? So again, thank you all for watching. Feel free to subscribe. I make language and travel related content. I'm aiming to post around every other Monday. I have also created a Lemon8 account where it's going to be completely travel and language learning themed as well. So if you want more content from me, feel free to follow me there on that account. I will have it linked down below. But if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, hit the bell, and I will see you all in another video soon. Adios.